Hey guys, so for this video, I'm gonna showcase a few helpful tricks to boost your FPS and reduce your input lag. Ever since the start of Chapter 2 Season 2, Fortnite's in-game performance has gone to crap. Builds feel delayed, frames are at an all-time low, and people are frustrated. I think it has a lot to do with the new physics system Epic recently moved Fortnite over to, as well as the fact there's now a ton of NPCs at all of the new locations. Either way, the game does not feel good, and Epic is doing nothing about it. Don't you fear though, because Papa Jarian is here to save the day. I've been consistently getting my normal 240 FPS with only an i7-8700, and I've actually found a way to make my building and editing way more responsive than in past seasons. So as per usual, sit back, relax, and pay attention, because this is my FPS boost guide for Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 2. The first and maybe the most helpful thing I've done to reduce stutters is to re-enable DirectX version 12. I bet a lot of you guys didn't know that DX12 was actually disabled for a large portion portion of last season. By that, I mean even when you selected it through the in-game settings, Fortnite would keep you on DX11 anyways. All they said about it was that they gained some valuable info from it and are going to make some improvements in order to re-enable it in early 2020. Well, guess what? Early 2020 is now, and the new and improved DX12 is available to use. The two things you have to do before you apply it though are to first, make sure your Windows version is up to date. You can check by going to your settings, update and security, then Windows update. Look at the top and it will tell you if you're all up to date or not. Then the second thing is to make sure your Nvidia or AMD drivers are up to date as well. If they're not, obviously download the newest ones since Epic did make DX12 only work on Windows version 1607 or newer. Anyways, once you do that, you can go into your Fortnite settings, scroll down to the bottom, and turn DX12 on. A prompt should pop up telling you to restart your game, so do that and you're good to go. Now, if you're wondering what DX12 is and what it actually does, it's basically a Microsoft API that helps developers make their games look better and run smoother. According to Epic Games themselves, it delivers better CPU performance and allows for the distribution of rendering jobs across multiple cores. This results in players with higher end GPUs getting a higher and steadier frame rate. Alright, but does it actually work? In my case, yes, it actually helps out a lot. When I had it enabled and I was not recording, I got around 500 FPS in creative, hashtag weird flex, but okay, while with DX11, my frames ranged anywhere from 300 and 250 all the way up to 550. Then when I did record, you could see my frames weren't as insane on DX12. Again though, DX11 had higher maximum frames and lower minimum frames, meaning DX12 was steadier and more stable, which is what we want. Gameplay wise, I actually did feel a big difference in input lag when I switched back to DX11. My build seemed to place a lot slower, and my edits were definitely not as crisp. That's why my advice is to try both of them out and see which suits your PC the best. Some of you guys will get better frames on DX11 and some of you, like me, will get better frames on DX12. It all depends on your specific PC and your specific graphics card. Just play around with DX11 and DX12 and let me know which one you end up using along with your specific graphics card. Last few notes on DX12 is that it can cause your game to crash when you all tab out of it. I'm a weirdo who never really tabs out so it didn't bother me too much. Also, if you notice your game flickering or your builds look like mobile, that's completely normal and is not a bug or anything like that. It should only last for a few seconds and that's because that's how DX12 actually works. All of that flickering is the program itself rendering out different areas and objects on the map. This way it can render them faster the next time it sees them and it doesn't impact your performance as much. Finally, you should be aware that DX12 is not available for every single graphics card. It is available for most and you can just look up if your own card is supported by it as well as a big list of which cards it supports, but for those of you with really old computers like 2012 type stuff, you may not be in luck. The next thing that's helped me out, more specifically to reduce my input lag, is to utilize a program called Timer Resolution. I actually didn't hear about this until I saw Liquid Stretch make a tweet about it, where he trollingly accused Kanata of abusing it to take walls. Kanata did say he used it in the past, and I know for a fact Tifu currently uses it since I saw it open while he tried to change his red last week. Regardless, after looking more into it and seeing everyone in the replies of Stretch's tweet saying it actually helped out a lot, you know I had to share it in this video. What you want to do is type timer resolution into Google and go to the second website which should be soft112.com. The site should look like this and the download should be published by a guy named Lucas Hale on October 7th. Go and press the green download link at the bottom and then press the green zip button at the top. One more page should pop up that says it finished scanning the file 
file, so again click the green button and the file should finally download. Once the download completes, drag it onto your desktop, right click on it, and click extract here. If you do not have an option for that, it means you don't have a zip file processor like WinRAR, so you will have to download that as well. Back to the trick, you can then open it up and click the maximum button to make the program work at its full effectiveness. As you can see, the current resolution went from almost a full millisecond to about a half a millisecond, meaning you've cut the default Windows latency and input lag you're all used to in half, resulting in much more responsive and snappier gameplay. I've also heard it can boost your FPS depending on how butt cheeks your machine is, but this is mainly aimed at decreasing your PC's response time. Oh, and I almost forgot, make sure you do not close out of the timer resolution application while you play. It needs to be open and running as you play Fortnite, or else none of the changes will be applied, so just minimize it and keep it in the background. Lastly, when you're done gaming, just click default to make the timer resolution go back to what it said before, and you're then okay to close out of the program. Moving on, and the next trick is to disable your full screen optimizations, which I learned from the wizard Polaric. To do it, go into your file explorer and click on whichever drive your Fortnite is stored on. Mine happens to be my C drive. Then, go to the Epic Games folder, Fortnite, Fortnite Game, Binaries, and Win64. Scroll down and look for these four files that have the Fortnite logo next to them. There should be three shipping ones and then one that says Launcher. For each, right click, go down to Properties, Compatibility at the top, and check the box that says Disable Full Screen Optimizations. After that, click the Change High DPI Settings option and select Override High DPI Scaling Behavior and make sure the scaling is performed by the application. Apply that and remember to do it for the three other ones, including the Launcher and Easy Anti-Cheat System, as it will improve your frames in-game. The last FPS boost trick is a seemingly obvious one that for some reason, everyone overlooks. By that, I mean when the original stretched res came back about a week ago, everyone was talking about how much better it made their game feel. Then when Epic patched the glitch and ruined our fun, the same people said their games were running like garbage. I'm not sure if those people are purposely being difficult, but you could still get all of the extra frames you had from the original stretched res without actually playing on a stretched resolution. The first way to do that is to go into your Fortnite settings and change your display resolution. I recommend 1600 by 900 since 1280 by 720 is a little too blurry. Either way, they will both help you get a ton of extra frames. On top of that, you won't lose any FOV like you would with the new stretched res, as your aspect ratio is the same as it is on 1920 by 1080. Tons of pros like Ghost Bizzle and Liquid Stretch use this trick, so if you're struggling to get stable frames, definitely consider making the switch to 1600 by 900. Then the other option you have that basically does the same thing is to leave your display resolution at 1920 by 1080 but change your 3D resolution which is the percentage bar down here. Changing it will make in-game objects like houses, rocks, and everything else on the map look less clear since there will be less pixels. Something like 50% would be half of the pixels on 1920 by 1080 aka 960 by 540 and if my math is correct 83.3% would be 1600 by 900. Just multiply the X res and the Y res by the percentage on the slider and you can figure out which res that that is. The main difference between doing this versus changing your display resolution is that your 3D resolution does not affect anything on your heads up display. So if you're having trouble seeing your map or material count on 1600 by 900, you can instead change your 3D resolution percentage and get that same exact res without making your map, inventory, or quick bar blurrier. By the way, if you want to, you can play on the new stretched res. This is what pros like Faze Martos and Liquid Metro play on. The technique to get it is the same exact exact thing it's always been, just go into the game files and change it there, but you won't get that extra FOV like you did with the glitch that Epic just patched. In fact, on the new stretch res, you'll actually get less horizontal FOV. The only reason people actually use it is because it does make your game smoother with the extra frames, and just like in CSGO, there's a placebo effect where you think it's easier to hit shots because the targets look bigger. In the end though, it's all up to you on whether you want to just lower your resolution or play on stretched res. Both will drastically drastically improve your FPS, reduce your input lag, and make your game run smoother. Overall guys, those are all the tips and tricks I've used to get better and more stable FPS in the new season. So if you found the video useful or learned something new, then do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on post notifications. Shout out to everyone using code Jarian. I really do appreciate all of you guys if you decide to use my code over everyone else's, and I know I say it every video, but I truly do mean it. Thank you all. Otherwise, that's it from me and I will see you guys
you guys in the next one. Later.